Essays on Empathy is a collection of short games that Deconstruct Team has created over the years. There's a total of 10 games included, each of them exploring different gameplay styles that in many ways feels like a celebration of the studio's history and shows the foundation of the auteur tone they've developed along the way. Most of the games included were created for game jams, with only Di Tres El Cuatro as a completely new title. One thing they all have in common is their experimental tone. These short experiences are to the point that they don't even include saving systems, but some clever twists are found in their design. Taking a look at the titles, we have Underground Hangovers, a small metroidvania about mining for ore and using weird items to explore. However, the cave is smaller than it may seem at first, and the upgrade progression in the game follows a linear formula. Initially, the player has a double hook shot to reach higher areas and storage limited to 100 items. Some rooms include teleport points that can get the player back to the surface, where they have to eventually buy a big sack, a drill, and items that allow the player to change places with other creatures and activate floating boulders. These can't be obtained in any other order, and it'll be necessary to spend ores building a rocket and leaving the planet. One impressive aspect of the game is that the amount of ore you're carrying takes a toll on the player's movement. Without anything in your bag, you're extra light and responsive, but it gets progressively tougher to move as you get greedier. Both Supercontinent and Zen of the Art Transhumanism are mini games that were later used in Deconstruct Team's The Red Strings Club. The latter is a pottery game about making human upgrades that can make people more charismatic and attractive or suppress their desires. You can use shapes to make these upgrades, though it's possible to pick any form, only two options are significant for each client, do their biddings or eliminate their wishes. With descriptions on one screen and the actual pottery on another, it isn't that hard to forget which one affects the process. On the other hand, Supercontinent is about using an old phone landline to uncover a corporate conspiracy. The player can change the voice to match another character and has to look for correct phone numbers to call picking talk topics. Though the game has an interesting twist down the line, some typos haven't been fixed and there are very few interaction options. Engo Laster's January 2021 is about a woman whose work is searching for alien life. She finally contacts them in Engo Laster and she's left bleeding. At the same time, her son is trying to leave home and it's up to the player to manage her family situation, her dwindling health, and the specific resources necessary to get home or try to look for the aliens around town. Behind Every Great One is a game about being a housewife. It's an adventure game about going through the house doing the chores. However, the stress piles up and his life brings even worse situations over time. Coping with everything becomes consistently harder. This burden is indicated by camera angles becoming progressively closer and giving a claustrophobic feel to the game. The only big issue with this one is that sometimes it's hard to interact with the items as getting too close to an object may cause the prompt to disappear. Other than that, it presents a strong discussion on a clear social issue. 1145 of Vivid Life tells the story of a girl who thinks about the skeleton of another person inside her. To investigate it, she stole an x-ray machine and some tools so she can dig out into her own body. As the player gets small proofs inside her body, they interact with the radio and choose wild explanations for them. It's a weird experience. Eternal Home Floristry is about an assassin who has left one of his arms in a big conflict. Being taken by a florist, he now works with the last real flowers in town. With them, he can send powerful messages to people causing big impacts in their life. Each flower has a meaning and it's necessary to pick three of them, which will affect the next outcome of the story. In Dear Substance of Kin, the player assumes the role of a coppersmith. You have the power to alter people's fates, but it's necessary to sacrifice one of their own members in the process. With their blood, you can then trace lines of their backs thus cutting their personality attributes. Though the game does a good job at creating a dreadful atmosphere, the same can't be said to understand the impacts of actions and see the consequences. It feels unnecessarily cryptic, and the slow movement that can only be done from a mouse is just annoying. Bookshelf Limbo is about a man looking for a book for his father. You pick up books, read online reviews, and back cover quotes, and try to find the best gift for him. By picking choices for why he's disregarding them, it's possible to understand his circumstances and relationship with his dad. The last title, The Tres El Cuatro, is the only new game in the package, and one of the lengthier titles. A gay couple works as comedians and you can play as one of them, Garza, still an experience in the job. However, the comedy is based on making a deck of cards you can use during stand-up. The system includes four types of cards, blank, 
pour, build, and punch. It's necessary to pick through a hand of three cards that you don't like to use, changing the performance accordingly. Blanks mean you failed the joke and you don't get points. Pour halves your performance earnings. Build means you get another hand of three cards by giving some retort, and punch is an ideal punchline to end the joke. For each show, the couple has a conversation and the game sheds some light on their inner thoughts. These moments can be lighthearted or bittersweet, but they're very humane no matter the case. Besides the game, the collection offers galleries with concept arts and even design documents. There are also videos discussing the team's thoughts of each title. Essays on Empathy is a glance at Deconstruct Team's history. The games are clever and enjoyable, showing the team's auteur tone as they explore different gameplay styles. People fond of unique or experimental games are likely to enjoy this collection, though some would have benefited from developing their concepts further. Noisy Pixel is giving Essays on Empathy a 7.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Please read the full review at noisypixel.net. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.